You know, ever since I started my channel back up, I've been trying so many different lighting angles because in every single video, it looks like I have two black eyes and like 20 bags under my eyes. But I'm starting to realize that it might be because I stay up till three every morning playing Call of Duty and Valorant with my friends. Hey guys, in this video, I wanted to talk about how much software engineers really make in 2020. When you go on YouTube, there's a bunch of different videos on this topic and there's a lot of information out there. I think that this topic is important because even though a lot of people generally know that yes, software engineers make a lot of money, especially when compared to a lot of other different vocational or engineering disciplines. But as someone that went to Stanford the past four years and was studying computer science, even I didn't know just how high the numbers were. My first three years of college, I kind of just studied computer science because I wasn't really sure what I wanted to take. And when I took the intro computer science course, it was interesting and I did well in it and I figured, hey, I hear that people that do this tend to make a good amount of money and I wanted to make sure that I was financially secure to be able to start a family in the future. So I went ahead and decided to go through with this. But I kind of just assumed that high-end engineers made about $100,000 a year and that that was it. And I figured like, well, that's a ton of money. Like I'll be good for, for life and whatnot. But it wasn't until the summer before my senior year when I was in my last internship at Twitter where I started looking at the numbers of what my potential return offers could look like. I was looking into this information because I wanted to make sure that if I needed to negotiate, I knew how much I could expect and how much I could ask for. I was kind of blown away. The number that I thought about $100,000 is high, but what a lot of these Silicon Valley engineers are really making is a little bit more eye-opening. And if you're making the decision of what you want to study in college, you really need to not make the mistake that I did and take into account how much money you're leaving on the table. So with that, let's get into this video. If you're new around here, I encourage you to subscribe for more videos like this, and I really appreciate it if you liked it. So here we are on this Michigan Tech website that has salary values for a bunch of different engineering disciplines. So in particular, we're going to look here at the mean annual salary and the top 10% salaries for these, these different um, careers. And we can see that these figures come from the United States Department of Labor and are as recent as October 2019. So it's not just like some random study that Michigan Tech did on like its students. This is, seems to be nationwide. And when we look at something like software engineering, they the top 10% seem to make about $166,000. Um, now this is high, but there are also some other ones that make a similar value, like chemical engineering it looks like, or construction management. It seems like when choosing between engineering majors, a lot of people are choosing between like computer science or uh, mechanical engineering or even like civil engineering. And we can see here that the top 10% of software engineers seem to make around $25,000 more than a civil engineer. And that number, that gap is even larger when looking at mechanical engineers here. So this extra $25,000 is going to come at a higher tax bracket than other money. So let's just assume that this money gets taxed a ton, like 50%, and that you're only really left with about $12,000. So $12,000 a year is a lot. But if, say, you work around 30 years, that's going to be about $360,000, which is a ton of money. But over 30 years, it might not necessarily be that crazy of a difference. And if you just really want to study civil engineering and mechanical engineering, it may, it may seem like that difference is really worth it. So what people don't really take into account, however, and which is the main point that I want to get across in this video, is that you don't just get those $12,000 and save them in your bank account and do nothing with them and just spend them. If you live the same quality of life as some civil engineer might live or a mechanical engineer and live as if you make the salary of those engineers and just invest all the extra money that you make, which is around $12,000 a year, just going off the figures that we were looking at, if we invest this in some sort of fund that gives us uh, interest and we reinvest the interest and get compound interest on that, even with a $0 uh, initial investment and just contributing $1,000 a month for 30 years, which is the $12,000 difference kind of that we were talking about, at an estimated interest rate of 7%, semi-annually, and we calculate this, we can see here that here's the $360,000 that you would make extra if you just put away all that money but if you invest it, you, here is around $700,000 more that you're making just by putting away your money and accessing it 30 years down the line. Now, 30 years seems like a ton of time, and obviously it is. There's no guarantees of what the world is going to look like at that point. But if you look historically in the stock market, you can really reasonably expect a 7% uh, return rate. And on top of that, it's not like 30 years is by the time you're like 65 and like completely retired. If you're starting out fresh out of college, you're 22, 30 years in the future is going to be 52. Realistically, you still have a lot of years left and to enjoy that money. You're going to start to maybe have grandchildren if that's if you want to start a family. You're going to have children maybe in college or children out of college. 
and you can reinvest that money into your family, making sure that they're okay, or you can use that money to invest in charities and whatnot. Now, one important thing that I want to make sure to acknowledge is that obviously money isn't everything, and you shouldn't just study a particular field because you want to make more money. But you also shouldn't just completely go into the field that you want to go into with disregarding the money that you leave on the table. You want to make sure that you make a responsible decision for yourself, given your background, given your family's um, financial status and whatnot, and making sure that for the lifestyle that you want to live, you're down the right path. But all that taken into account, a million dollars is a ton, but even if you just go off your $142,000 salary that we saw here for like a civil engineer, you're still going to be able to invest a lot of that money and make a compound interest and still make a million dollars or more by just investing that the money that you make and, and saving money as you're making it. But the difference here is that at the end of the day, the degrees are pretty similar and the jobs are pretty similar. You're still going to have to go to a four-year institution and study the material, take hard math classes, take hard science classes. You're still going to have to probably commute into a city and to get to your job. You're still going to have a 40-hour work week. You're still going to report to a boss or a manager. You're still going to have team meetings. The only real difference here is the 15 to 20 hours where you're doing your actual technical work of coding or if it's a different engineering discipline, whatever. I'm, obviously, I'm not one of those engineers, so I don't really know exactly what that job entails. But at the end of the day, the jobs are going to be similar, and the work that you need to do to get one of those jobs is also going to be similar. So what you want to ask yourself is, is it really worth it to leave that money on the table just for a job that's going to be slightly different? You have to take into account what you could do with that money. You can you could save that money in order to invest it into a hobby that truly makes you happy and that truly makes you passionate. Or you can invest that money into a side business if that's what you want to do. If you have charities that you're really passionate of, political donations you want to make, all this extra money could go into funneling and making changes that you personally want to see in the world. And that's the key thing that I think that people don't mention. If you go on YouTube and you look up why you should study computer science, there's a lot of videos that actually tell you that they sh that you shouldn't, but they really don't take into account how much the extra money that you can make as a software engineer is actually worth. And they also don't take into account that that money isn't necessarily going to go into buying more expensive cars and more expensive clothing. You can reinvest it into helping things or movements or people that you really care about grow. Now, one thing about these values, though, is that they might be a little bit on the low end. If we go to this website here that's called levels.fyi, this website is basically a crowdsourced site where engineers can report how much money that they make. So, for example, if we just go here to Facebook, this is the entry-level Facebook job, and we see that the that the average amount that a Facebook engineer might make across different like cities and whatnot is $185,000 a year. And this is a breakdown of salary, stock, and bonus. Now, there's a ton of videos that go into detail of what each individual thing here is, so I recommend you guys go watch one of those videos. But my focus here right now is I want to go through the Google engineer's um, salary and go through the entry level, the mid level, and senior level and really look at the differences in money made and just how much that money is actually worth. If you look here at a entry level Google engineer, again this is similar to Facebook with a similar base, you have stock and you have a bonus. And here levels.fyi shows us um, how much a bunch of different people are reporting. So uh, if you look at all these values besides the value reported from India, None of these values are less than $150,000. And these, this is across different places. Like here, even someone from Colorado is making $154,000 a year, which is in a place where the cost of living is much less than somewhere like San Francisco or Mountain View. And we can see that the, level, the amount of experience that people have, here's an engineer that is going into work uh, having no prior software engineering experience. And most of these people have just been in industry for about two years. Now, say you're at Google and you work there for two years, you meet all your target goals, and you're doing well, and eventually you get a promotion into L4 or like mid-level. So you're going from $188,000 to $263,000. This is a huge increase of $80,000. So just looking here at different reported values again, again we see stuff at Mountain View, Sunnyvale, San Francisco, Mountain View, um, Irvine, now, if you kind of want to know what interviewing at Google is like, I have a video on this topic that you guys should check out. But yeah, here is the L4 uh, salaries. I recommend that you guys come into the site and kind of play around with them more. But say you work here for another five years, 
And finally, you get the promotion to senior software engineer, and now you're making $355,000. Now, this is more than double the value that we saw the top 10% of the, uh, software engineers make. So, now we have to consider, this is $355,000. Here we can see the different reported values. A lot of people are making this money six to eight years into their career here. So now if we go back to the compound interest that we were looking at, and instead of doing the $1,000 contribution, we've essentially gone from making $188,000 to making about another $100,000 if, if we take out taxes. So let's assume we have about another $100,000 left over. And before we were already making $188,000, which is a lot, you can live a great quality of life with this money. Maybe in the Bay Area it's not quite as nice, but you can definitely go by and save a lot of money on this salary and you, you will live very well here. So as long as when you're getting promoted you don't increase your cost of living and instead you can invest the extra money that you're making and now here you're investing um, seven thousand, let's just say like seven thousand five hundred dollars a month for thirty years again. Now we have to take into account that at this point we've probably been working in the industry for like eight to ten years so by the time 30 years pass, we are going to be older and it's going to be a little harder to quite enjoy the money. But nonetheless, we can see here that if we just saved all that money, we would be saving $2,700,000, a ton of money, a lot, probably more money than really anybody can ask for in a lifetime. But if you invest that money, you're looking at $8,800,000. This is a difference of about $6 million. And even when you take out taxes and whatnot, Say you're left with like half of this, that's still like maybe like four million, four million and a half dollars that you're making from this investment of two million seven hundred thousand dollars. And it's not like you're investing every penny you have, you're just investing the extra that you're making from going from being a senior engineer and an entry level engineer, where an entry level engineer is still making almost two hundred thousand dollars a year. So again, we have to go back and talk about what that money really means. It's eight that's like millions of dollars more than than we had before. Millions of dollars more that can go into getting a nice house, investing in real estate, setting up your future generations, making charitable donations to movements that really matter to you, investing in the people that really matter to you. Now, obviously not everybody's gonna be a Google engineer. Not all of us are gonna be Google senior software engineers. So that's why I, wanted, I had started off and shown the values here that the government reports are the average values. And even here, we still saw that there's a ton of money that's on the table. But if we look more into, um, if you look here more into Levels Fi, there are a ton of companies here that still pay similar amounts of money as Google does. It's not just the fan companies, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google, that pay all this money. It's also companies like Robinhood, which is a startup um, that's paying, look, you can see these values like close to $200,000. We have Twilo, uh, over $150,000, Open Door, over $150,000, on, on, and all of this is for entry-level positions. So it's not just the fan companies, there's a lot of different companies. I recommend that you guys go to this website and really wrap your head around how much money is on the table here. So yeah, I just wanted to talk about all this stuff so to make sure that everybody knows what's on the table when you're choosing what your career wants to be. At the end of the day, you should still take the career that you think is going to make you happy and that is, you're going to be able to live the best life that you want to live. Thanks for watching this video. If you made it all the way to here, I really appreciate it. The watch time really helps the YouTube algorithm display this video more to other users. So please remember to drop a like and subscribe. Thank you.